So we want to start off our cosmic distance ladder by considering the distances to nearby stars. Now even though we say these stars are nearby, they're still much too far away in order to send any signal or definitely to send any spacecraft to try to measure the distance. So all that we have to work with is the light that is actually coming to us from these distant objects, uh, from these distant stars. So a good place to start is by considering how do we actually see depth perception? How do our eyes uh, register uh, distance? So let's say I draw a pair of eyes. These might look a little bit weird, but just, uh, just go with it. And let's say that far away, there's a wall that has a, a bunch of different colors to it. So part of the wall is yellow. Uh, part of the wall is going to be green. Let's add that in. Part of the wall is going to be blue. So as I look at these, this wall, uh, this is the image that I'm going to see. So I see a yellow panel, I see a green panel, let me get the right color, a green panel, and I see a blue panel. Okay. So now let's say I have some object that's in the foreground. We're going to say a, a nice red object right here. Now. Depending on which eye I'm looking through, uh, where will I see this object relative to the background? Well, if I look through this eye, then I see this object in this direction, and if I keep going back, I see it's behind the yellow panel. So from this eye's view, it's going to be over here. And if I look at this object through my other eye, then it will see the red object being behind the blue panel. So it's going to see it over here. So depending on which eye I look through, I'll see it at different points. Now let's say I move this object, this same red object, uh, a little bit closer to me. So here's where the object is now. And let's do the exact same thing. If I look through one eye, I'm actually going to see it to the side of the yellow panel. So, so now through my one eye, I see it over here. I guess I didn't do my picture big enough, but we can just go off the picture a little bit. And if I look through the other eye, I'm going to see it's off to the side of the blue panel. So we have the two images from either eyes when we saw that we saw when the object was far away, and we saw the two images that I see when the object is nearer. And I notice that Depending on how far away this object is, these two images through my two eyes will look will have different spacings to them. And you can actually do this yourself by looking at a wall that's uh, far away, holding up a finger at arm's length, and then looking through either eye. And you'll notice that as you look through either eye, your finger will appear to move relative to the back wall. Now, if you take your finger and move it closer to your eyes and do the same thing, alternating which eye you're looking through, you'll notice your finger appears to move a lot more. So this property that, as I look through either eye, the object will appear to move relative to the background, and how much it moves is dependent on how far away the object is, this phenomenon is referred to as parallax. And it's how we see depth perception, and is ultimately how we also measure the distances to nearby stars. But before we talk about exactly how we measure these nearby stars, uh, one thing that we might note is that the distance between your eyes is very important in how much of this parallax effect that you actually see. If my eyes were farther apart, then this parallax would be greatly increased. I would be able to measure the parallax, this parallax shift, in objects that are farther and farther away. So the longer this, uh, this separation between my two vantage points, or the longer this baseline, the more effectively I'm going to be able to measure the parallax of very distant objects. So when we consider uh, trying to measure the distances to nearby stars using this notion of parallax, we want to find how to get the longest baseline possible, the longest distance between two vantage points when I look at the star. So in order, in order to do this, let's uh, take a look at a picture of the solar system. So here's the sun, and we have the Earth 
in orbit around the sun. And based on measurements that we've made within the solar system, we know that the distance from the Earth to the sun is 1 AU, 1 astronomical unit, and 1 AU is equal to 149.6 times 10 to the 9 meters, or about 150 million kilometers. So this is going to be the baseline for our measurement of parallax. So let's say we want to measure the distance to some nearby star that we'll put here. Now this is obviously not to scale, the nearest star is going to be way farther away, this diagram is going to be greatly stretched out in the upwards direction, but it's just an example. And let's say that far behind this star, we have a set of background stars. Now these stars are far enough away that as we move around the sun, we will not be able to notice any change in the position of these stars. They're just too far away to, to measure any parallax of them. So as we orbit the sun, we're going to observe how this star seems to move relative to these background stars in the exact same way that we that we were looking at parallax before we had two different vantage points and the object that was in the foreground appeared different on the background so let's see how this how this actually works well at one point in the year when the earth is in this part of its orbit i observe this star and it seems to be in front of these sets of background stars so then I might wait uh, six months until the Earth is on the other side of its orbit, and then I'll observe the same star again. Okay, And then it will appear to be in front of these stars. And it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, six months later. As I observe this star at different points in my orbit, I will notice that this star will seem to trace out a circle relative to these background stars. So let's, uh, let's take a quick picture of what this would look like from the point of view of the Earth. So these are my background stars. And as I observe this star throughout the year, uh, at first when I was uh, in this position, the star started over here. And then as I orbit, the star seems to move in this sort of pattern. And if the star is directly above the solar system, it will uh, trace out this circle. Now, this circle has a certain radius to it, and we can measure this radius as an angle, and I'll show you how we do that. If I were to draw a line from the sun to this star, then I notice that we form a right angle triangle here. So this angle is gonna be 90 degrees, uh, that points towards the Earth, and I make a right angle triangle. Well, this angle that we get is going to be very important for measuring the the distance to this star and uh, there's a similar triangle that's uh, made on this side so this angle can actually be measured by saying how far do i have to move do i have to move my telescope what angle do i have to change my telescope by between looking at this point in the sky and at this point in the sky and this angular how much I have to change the angle of my telescope is related to this angle that we see in the diagram. Now, if I can measure this angle, if I can measure where the what shape the star traces out relative to the background stars, and I measure this angle, well, then I can do some very simple trigonometry. We have a right angle triangle. This distance is 1 AU. We know how far that is. And we want to measure the distance from the sun to the star that we're interested in, and we have this angle. So if I take the tan of this angle, the tan of this angle, then the tan of this angle is just the opposite side of the right angle triangle uh, over the adjacent side of the triangle. So that's going to be 1 AU over the distance to the star. So I can very simply rearrange this to give the distance to the star is 1 AU over the tangent of this angle that I can measure. I know what 1 AU is. If the star is close enough and if I can observe this uh, parallax motion, then I can measure the angle theta, and that will give me the distance to the star. Now, since the parallax angles we're dealing with are going to be so small, 
we can actually further simplify this tan theta and we can make a couple of other uh, unit conversions to get the basic parallax equation. And that equation is the distance to the star that we're looking at in parsecs. And uh, for reference, one parsec is approximately 3.26 light years. So the distance to that object in parsecs is equal to one over this parallax angle measured in arc seconds, arc seconds. And again, for reference, one arc second is one thirty-six hundredth of a degree. So a very, very small angle, one thirty-six hundredth of a degree shift in the sky corresponds to a distance of 3.26 light years. So for objects that are even farther away, this angle is going to be even smaller. So this kind of shows us how small a measurement we're actually making and how accurate an instrument you need when making these parallax measurements. And we'll look a little bit more detail as to how this works, how this parallax measurement works when we're not directly over the solar system and a couple of other interesting facts about this in the next video.